Uh, my name is Mark Bondurant. I am the CEO of Twin Oaks WMS. I'd like to personally welcome you to our educational seminar today, how to leverage a WMS to drive efficiencies, reduce costs, and improve service levels. I've been in the industry for 30 plus years, more specifically in the WMS space. I'm very passionate about how a WMS has the potential, I stress potential, to transform a warehouse from mediocre Sorry, Jim, what are you doing? Uh, to transform a warehouse from mediocre to exceptional. Uh, I could probably spend the whole 45 minutes myself, or if you come by the booth the whole day, talking about WMS systems. I'm that passionate about it. But rather than hear from me, I thought it might be, might be more beneficial for you to hear from one of our customers, one of our clients who have been running a, our Twin Oaks WMS for six years. So to that point, I've invited Jim Stanchel. He is the Senior Warehouse Manager for Natural Life. He'll be doing a case study presentation. Uh, what I will share with you about Jim is he is an exceptional and outstanding leader. He runs a very tight operation in his warehouse. He's not afraid to try new features and functionalities, and he holds an exceptionally high bar to his staff. So you're in for a real treat to hear from Jim. So without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to Jim Stanchel. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Can you hear me? Awesome. I'd like to thank you guys for coming. I appreciate your time, so thanks for being here. Um, I'd like to ask you to please enjoy your very plush, very high-end seating. Uh, they've spared no expense, so you're welcome. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk about the advantages of having an elite and dynamic WMS um, and what it has been able to do for me as a manager and for Natural Life as a company. Um, first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I am uh, a very happily married man with two beautiful daughters. Uh, Work-life balance is a very large uh, focus for me, so I like to spend time with them as much as possible. Um, I currently reside in Atlantic Beach, Florida, slightly warmer than here now, so can't wait to get back over there. Thank you, Chicago. Um, and I've been in management for uh, 10 plus years now, the first half of which was with UPS. Um, but I got tired of my employees driving away from me at 65 miles an hour, so I got into warehousing where they can't escape me, so we're good. Um, Natural Life is an apparel home accessory uh, company that was started in 1996 by its owner and founder, Patty Hughes. Um, she started the company out of her garage. She began by going to the beach and writing messages in the sand and taking pictures of them as the waves washed them away. And then she turned those into magnets and then she went to craft fairs and sold them there. Um, she started as small as that and she was able to grow it uh, to a small storage unit where she predominantly focused on B2B sales and getting her stuff sold in other stores. Uh, from there, she got her own small warehouse um, and was able to build up to a bigger 3PL later on. From the 3PL, they transitioned back, we transitioned back into our own warehouse, a 40,000 square foot facility. Um, and then just last year, we outgrew that facility and are now in 120,000 square feet. Um, we're currently running about 110 associates to keep the operation up and moving. So um, growing very exponentially, very quickly. Um, and a lot of changes always being very exciting. All right. Um, Natural Life has had huge growth um, and a consistent expansion on its product line year over year. Uh, what started with a small trinkets and treasures company has grown uh, to a large apparel line, home decor, small furniture, gifts and accessories. Uh, we're pushing right at about 4,000 different SKUs or products right now. Um, our fulfillment center handles products that are as small as bracelets and anklets and as large as bar carts and 8 by 10 area rugs. So a very large swath of differentiation there. Um, currently our work breakdown is about 70% B2C or consumer orders and about 30-25% B2B. Uh, it's shifted over the years and we've gone heavier into the, the B2C uh, fulfillment section. Boop. All right. Um, in 2017 we left a 3PL um, and opened up, reopened up our own 40,000 square foot Natural Life warehouse, uh, which we outgrew in about three years. Uh, 
we built out the new one here in 2022. So in 2021, we had to operate out of two warehouses. Uh, we were navigating the build out and the transition between the two of them. And after we were fully operational in the 120,000 square foot warehouse, we kept the 40,000 square foot warehouse as an overflow uh, for our inventory. Um, Natural Life has averaged about 10 to 20% annual growth year over year for about the last five plus years. So we are consistently growing and quickly. Um, we're expecting more growth this year. We have two more future expansions coming, uh, which I can explain further on, but we have uh, more high velocity pick, mo uh, pick locations being built on a third level of our mezzanine um, and another section of high velocity pick going on top of our low flow mezzanine as well. Um, hopefully those will be done by the end of this year, adding about 1,200 more pick faces to our warehouse uh, for high velocity picking. In the warehouse, we gauge our production by what we call lines. Uh, lines are the amount of different products on an order. Um, and we use our line production to gauge our efficiency in every department from picking to packing, shipping, returns. Um, our WMS allows us to track all of this in live time and have instant access to historical numbers, which makes it a lot easier for us as management and leadership to see what our people are actually doing in live time and then be able to hold them accountable or coach if people aren't performing where they need to be at. Um, in our 3PL setup, we went from being able to process about 3,000 lines on a good day to moving into our 40,000 square foot warehouse where we could do about five to 7,000 lines on a good day. And now that we're in our newest facility here um, with a higher level of automation, we're at about 15 to 16,000 lines a day um, on a good day. So really great exponential growth and um, a system that really allows us to maximize our potential. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've not changed the slide. Sorry, guys. Should have changed that. Um, this right here is Miss Patty. She's the one that started the company uh, back in 96. And there's a little bit of our exec team, our CFO and our head of IT, our VP of operations, but just a picture of all the people involved and some uh, stats about what we're dealing with year over year as we grow. Um, our next slide is going to be a video. So what I'm going to try and do here is kind of play it through for you guys one time. And then I'm going to go back and kind of ask to stop so I kind of explain what's going on. And it's going to be a life cycle of an order as how we process it right now currently in our new warehouse. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have that played and then I'll go back and we can stop it. Fun, right? Super exciting. Um, all right, so we can just go ahead and pause at the beginning here. Um, this is our the beginning of our operation, and our operation starts with batching. Uh, with the system that we run, WMS, we have full control over the orders that are coming into our warehouse, the types of orders. Uh, we can see them as they come in, and we can group and batch them any way we want. So we have full control. Again, I, I referenced earlier, we're about 75% uh, B to C, about 25% B to B. So as the work comes in, we can segregate them into each class of trade that they need to be. We can focus on our uh, expedited or international orders if we have early cancel dates or anything like that. So we have full view of the batching process, which I'll go through a little bit later. Once we've batched our work and we've released it to our line, this is the first step in our order process. The induction line turns on. Each tote that's on the line here has a label on it. We call that a TID. As the totes go through the line, they get read by our induction laser, which is right here. As every single tote goes through, it gets read, the laser reads the, the label on there and it assigns that tote in order. All right, so pretty much every single tote is a different order. As the order gets assigned, the system then kicks the tote off and it takes itself down into our picking modules. Um, you can play it for a second, please. Pause there. Awesome. Thank you. 
Um, so this is after the induction line, and this is going through our first pick module. We have two different ways that we pick in our operation right now. Um, and we have the flexibility to be as dynamic as we need to in this. This right here, we call cluster picking. It is set up, this is our low velocity pick mod. The idea behind this one is, this is where we house all of our slowest moving SKUs, so we can maximize our shelving footprint. We can't possibly have a warehouse big enough to have everything be in a fast moving slot, right? So we need to maximize our footprint. That's where this comes in. So our, we analyze our data, find our slowest moving SKUs. We're very seasonal, so it changes frequently. And we house them here. This is set up on two different sides. We call the right-hand side SA and the left-hand side over here SB. The way our system works is the totes follow this automated path down here until they get to the end of the line right here. We have a divert, which is another laser eye scanner. That scanner reads the barcode on the tote again, and it, it knows everything that the WMS is communicating and tells them everything that is on that order. So if that order has a uh, pick that belongs on the SA side, the tote will divert to the right. All right. The way we pick in cluster picking is a picker signs into this side of the mod. As they sign in, they can grab a picking cart, which you can kind of see down here, the version of it over here. They can fit about six to eight different totes on each picking cart. They'll physically grab each tote. It doesn't matter which one they grab. And they'll hit begin, and they'll scan every single TID on that tote. That links this, the WMS, then creates this, uh, a pick snake or a walking path for that picker. It analyzes all of the orders there, puts them all in order, and then gives the picker an efficient walk path to go complete the, the picks. So the picker would get as many totes as they can fit, put them on the cart, hit begin on their wearable. The, to the WMS creates the walk path for them, and they walk the pick snake doing all the picks one at a time. The system tells them where to go, what to grab, and how many, and which tote it correlates to via the TID. So as they make their rounds and their entire pick snake, they walk around the back side here and come out. Once they're done completing all of their picks, the system tells them the, uh, the cart is complete, and they unload those totes back onto the automated belt here. All right? The totes go back through the exact same induction laser here, and if they have a pick on the left-hand side of the mod, it would divert to the left. If they do not have a pick, it just goes straight through. Um, so this is our low-velocity mod. We can hold our pickers in this area accountable to about 60 lines per hour. Uh, it's a bit slower, but again, it, it does maximize our footprint. Can you go a little forward, please? Thank you very much. Um, after they come through our slow, low velocity pick mod, they are, are on their way to our high velocity pick mod. Um, in our high velocity mod, which I'll discuss in a second, we used uh, dynamic zone picking, which I'll explain when we show it to you. As it comes around our low velocity mod, it has another divert here where if the order is done being picked in just the low velocity mod, it then diverts up to packing and takes itself away. If it has more picks after the low velocity mod, or it didn't have any in that module and just needs to go to the high velocity mod, it then diverts over to the right on this side and goes that way to be picked in our high velocity mod. All right, this is our high velocity mod. It is a two level operation. It is the mezzanine, so this is the first level of it. This mezzanine consists of three different diverts, this first level here. On each side of the divert, there's between six and seven bays. So the way we operate here is a picker is, scans into a zone. Each zone could be as small as one bay or as large as seven bays. And instead of picking a cart and loading it up and walking a pick snake, they're only responsible for the exact area that they're in here. All right? So as a tote gets diverted into their area, they scan the TID on that tote. It gives them the pick and location and quantity that they need to process. They go to that location, scan that product, turn around, put it back in the tote, and scan that tote again. If there is another pick in their area, in, that, in the bays they are assigned, then they'll go to get that pick. If that order is done in their area, they'll tell them pass. They put it back on the middle belt again, and it follows that path all the way through. Each bay has between four and five layers, uh, levels, and each uh, level has between six and seven pick faces. So our bays consist of between 24 and 35 different SKUs in them. Um, and this is a much faster process and we can hold our pickers accountable to about 120 lines an hour, um, which I'll discuss later, but it's a great jump and a proficiency uh, production gain and efficiency gain for us. Um, if you can go ahead and continue, please. Pause, thank you. Uh, this is our spiral. So at the end of our first level of the mezzanine, as the order is complete, it goes back onto the line. It travels up our spiral here and goes up to the second level of the mezzanine, which is set up the exact same way as the first one, just traveling in the opposite direction follows the exact same path, goes to divert, takes
picks left or right if it has picks. So in our mezzanine, we have six different diverts, 68 different bays, and two levels of picking operation. Um, and this is where our, a lot of our efficiency gains have come from, and the system allows us to be as efficient as possible because it just directs the pickers exactly where they need to go and what to grab. Okay. As the order is done in picking, it's gone through the entire pick mod and back. Pause there. Thank you very much. That goes over to our packing operation. So to exit our second level of our mezzanine and travel over to our packing department. Our packing department is four different pack aisles. Ooh, buttons. Um, one, two, three, and four down here. We have full control over what goes down what lane. So another level of automation and control that we have is we pack and ship a whole bunch of different part types of orders. Again, B2C, expedited, international, B2B, key accounts, what have you. Okay? We have full control live as we're operating to, to control what type of order goes down what bay, okay? or what lane, I'm sorry. I have 54 different pack stations operating right now. Part of our expansion is going to get us to about 80 different pack stations. For instance, right now, the way we operate is lane one on the far side here. I control and have all of our expedited and international orders go down that lane. So as soon as they're done, they go boom to that first lane and get packed and processed as soon as possible. All of our B2C orders and any order that is three days or older gets, goes down, we call it round robin, it goes down all three lanes. So no matter where it's coming down, it spreads the workout to everybody to keep all of my packers fed. Okay? The last lane, we send down all of our B2B work and all of our combined bin work. We call a combined, what a combined bin is to us is a tote that has multiple orders all in one tote, which I'll kind of go over when we discuss a batching operation. But that allows us to segregate all of our workload, have it fully handled and controlled so we can control our order turnaround, how much uh, focus or energy or people we need to put on that type of work to make sure our turnaround is where it needs to be. All right. um, our packers, the way it works for them is they stand at a pack station, which you can kind of see right here. Pack station has a, a, a monitor, keyboard, scanner, mouse, and a printer. And the way it works is a packer takes a tote off the top line, they scan the TID on that tote. The system then displays for them every single order, product, SKU, and quantity that belongs on that order. It is all on the left-hand side of the screen. The packer takes the product out of the tote and scans the UPC or the barcode on each individual SKU one at a time. As they do that, the SKUs transfer from the left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side of the screen. Okay? This allows the packers to have an easy reference as to what belongs in that order, how many of, they, how many of them they should have, and when they're complete. Right? If they're missing something, then when they're finished scanning and they have nothing left, there'll still be something left on the left-hand side of the screen. If they have too many of something, they'll finish scanning and everything will have moved from the left to the right, and they'll still have extra product in the tote. Right? So this allows us to improve our QC dramatically. Right? We're not hoping in, that the packer is just doing the right thing and counting correctly and QCing correctly. We're forcing them to systematically scan every single thing, thereby improving our percent effectiveness. All right? When they are done... After they've finished scanning everything, the system will give them a box size recommendation. We have about 12 different box sizes and four different envelope sizes and 4,000 different SKUs. So the amount of combinations of things that can go together are pretty vast. Um, so the box size algorithm helps take that decision away from having to decide what type of box and all that stuff. They grab the appropriate box, pack it back, all the SKUs back into the box based on the methods and processes that we train them on. Once the order is packed, they, they seal it up and put a different label on there. It's called a PID, uh, which we can explain later, but the information is transferred off the TID and onto a separate label of PID in the shippable container because we're not going to ship out our red totes. Um, the package is put on the lower belt here. When it is complete, it travels all the way down the lower belt and then diverts all the way around here and its way back up here. And this is our accumulation belt for our shipping lines so they don't get too backed up. But every box that is done being packed goes on one of these lines and follows this belt around. All right, as it comes around again and it's getting shipped, we have two laser curtain dimensioners. And what those are is there is a uh, automated pad here that is a scale that weighs it as it goes through. And there are two laser dimensioners, laser curtain dimensioners reading the boxes as they go through. It reads the dimensions, the length, width, and height of every box, and it reads that PID label. All right, that label holds all the information for the customer and where it's going. The system instantaneously communicates back to WMS, rate shops, that individual box with all of the couriers that we use 
gets the cheapest, most efficient way for that to, to be shipped as it does it at live time, continues down this belt and gets read by one more camera um, right up here. So by the time it's gone through that laser curtain dimensioner, it's already read and rate shopped. Then the WMS is commuting, communicating to the level of belting we have, which is called WCS, which just controls the routing. And it tells the, the WMS, tells the WCS which shipping lane it needs to go down. So it rate shops instantaneously. If the cheapest way for that box to go is UPS, then it diverts itself down to the UPS lane. Same thing with FedEx, same thing with USPS, okay? Um, so the system handles all of that in live time, um, saving us a lot of production. Um, right now, we are predominantly shipping uh, with FedEx, UPS, and uh, USPS predominantly, um, but we can put any parcel company we would like who wants to offer us rates into our rate shop, thereby keeping all of our parcel companies pretty honest and, and battling for the best prices in our business. Currently, we're processing about four to 5,000 different orders a day. Cool, so that was our very fun video. You're welcome. Cool, all right. Um, better WMS interfaces drive our improvements. Um, with our live interface, it allows us to be very dynamic and have all of the information at our fingertips so we can make the best decisions that we need to be as productive as possible. Uh, we have live time real integration with our ERP and Shopify, um, meaning that as we're picking, packing, shipping, and processing returns, um, our inventory is adjusting right there and live, keeping us as accurate as possible. Uh, this keeps us from overselling anything because of our live interface. So pretty much we have parameters set in a buffer. Once a SKU count gets below X amount, we take that off the website so we can't oversell it. WMS handles that interface for us. So as soon as we pick it down to a certain level and we don't have any more back, it communicates that product comes off the website and we don't oversell. As we process returns, if we have things that come back in that are deemed resellable and good enough too, and we can process those back in inventory and it passes that threshold, it turns itself back on and now it's sold on the website again. So we're not disappointing our customers offering things that they can't have. Um, the WMS also has a bypass um, which allows us to get our hands on the orders uh, pretty expeditiously. As it happens, they put, we'll go on the website, they process their order, it comes through Shopify. Within two to three minutes, we have that order in our warehouse that we can start working on. Um, so the bypass gets us that order that much more quickly. Uh, traditionally, what would happen is it would go through, it would go from Shopify to the ERP, the ERP would then have to release that work to us, and it would just take longer. With this bypass, we have the work instantaneously, therefore, therefore improving our order turnaround and allowing us to get the information right there, the work right there, and start working on it immediately. This is a better shot of our laser curtain dimensioner here. Um, what we do every day for shipping in order to make sure that we are getting the best rates and uh, all of our dimensions are as accurate as possible is we have went and procured the exact box specifications used by UPS in their warehousing to the exact dimensions, right? They have about seven or eight different box sizes that they run through to verify that their dimensioners are reading correctly. And that's how that, what they use to charge back their customers. So as it goes through their dimensioners, if it doesn't read what you guys are claiming or we claim the dimensions are, they go, oh, now you owe us more money, right? So what we do every single morning is we run about 12 different box sizes that are logged with PIDs on them so the WMS can track them every single day. And we run them through our laser curtain dimensioners thereby verifying that our dimensions that we're reading are true and accurate. And we can log that and hold on to that data historically. So when, as soon as anyone who deals with chargebacks can appreciate this, we get UPS or anyone saying, hey, you owe us $10,000 for this amount of boxes last month. We can go, no, we don't. We can pull our data file and say, here's what we ran. Here's what they measured at. Here's how accurate our dimensions are. And so the information you're providing is inaccurate. And we can fight those chargebacks, which has saved us a lot of money and is a very valuable tool. Um, the system also rate shops the boxes individually, which is huge for us because um, in our previous iteration, if an order was going to go out and it had 10 or 11 boxes on it, once that first box went through, that's how it's shipping, right? No matter of what's coming behind it or anything else like that. With our live integration in the system now, every single box that goes through gets rate shopped individually, okay? So that box, that size, that dimension is going to get the possible best rate as it goes out. And just because the first box already went out, doesn't mean these seven boxes behind it are now going to pay a ridiculous fee because that one went out that way, uh, which has helped us a ton as well.
Um, and then lastly, as they go through, the speed with which the system is able to uh, communicate to the parcel companies, rate shop and communicate back has made our shipping exponentially uh, faster, which is, is great. Pretty much as soon as that box gets through that laser curtain dimensioner, reads through that dimensionalized camera and diverts to, oh sorry, diverts to the ship station, all the shipper has to do is scan a PID and a label spits out. So it's literally seconds. There's no waiting. It's just ship, 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 ship. Um, so again, very valuable tools. Um, these are some of the results that we were able to compare. We were able to bring up um, kind of with our using our old WMS and moving to our new WMS. The inventory accuracy improvement of 68% is pretty much based on the, uh, the live integration, and that was a huge tool for us, right? So as we're processing and changing the inventory, picking, packing, shipping, and returning, the WMS is communicating back to the ERP in live time, keeping us as accurate as possible. There's no delays, there's no back research you have to do because of the timestamp differential, um, so that helps a ton. Um, our order turnaround um, is also improved significantly, and that is a lot based on our ability to batch the work correctly and have our hands on it the way we want it. Okay, and I alluded to a little bit before to how we have control over every part of the, of the order that comes through and so we can segregate them out correctly, batch them specifically the way we want, and then send them out and through that way. Um, so that has improved drastically. Um, and then shipping is, I know it says 500% up there, but it's honestly probably higher than that. It is amazing how much faster we were in our previous iteration. It was very manual kind of measuring dims, inputting them, doing all that stuff step by step. It took a long time and it went from a manual process to seconds. So it is amazing how much faster we are and the gains we've had in that. Uh, and lastly, because of the data that we're able to capture and see with everything we have going out, it allows us to um, talk with our shipping parcels and qualify for great dim divisors or rates when it comes to shipping. And because we have access to all of that data and process all those packages, we can then turn around and ask for better rates from all of our partners. Um, this is the main dashboard of our portal or our WMS that we log into every day. This is a, pretty much a very valuable tool for us and what it does is it allows us to kind of see the exact moment in, op in our operation that's happening right now. We can refresh it every second and it changes as we're processing, but it gives us all of the details that we need um, just at a quick glance and we can always process more if we need to, but it's divided obviously into six different boxes here, um, and it just shows you where all of your work is. This one is orders, containers, and lines. Um, TPL pool is pretty much the orders that are coming to us. We don't have access to batch them yet, but they're on their way to us. We can see what's coming in. To be picked is the orders that we have that are in our system that we can batch and release. So that's our group of orders that we're dealing with. Pardon me. That we can batch and release here. In picking is the amount of orders or lines that we have actually in picking currently at that time that we're working on. Uh, picking and packing is if an order has more than one uh, tote to it and one of them has made it to picking and the rest of the order is still in packing. So these are orders or lines that are in both departments currently. Being packed is obviously in the packing department. LTL routing is an order that's gone all the way through the whole process through shipping and is waiting on the rest of its order to come through so we can rate shop it and get it out. And then shipped today is obviously what we've sent out. With this information, we can add a glance, log on to here, see how much work I have in picking, see if I have too much work and I need to shift my heads around from picking to packing, see if I don't have enough work in picking and I need to do the opposite and send some pickers to go pack. Um, I can see the trends as they're coming in and see if I need to minimize my hours. If I am constantly behind and have too many lines in here, then I can know I need to up my staffing. So this is just one screen and an, an immediate snapshot with that information, it allows us to be very successful and kind of just monitor our, our status at that, at that time. Um, this is going to be talking about pretty much the way that we are able to batch and control our orders. So everything starts with us in batching. So as we, the orders come in, we have full view of exactly what is in front of us. We go through all of them and we decide how we want to differentiate and break those ones up. Our B2Cs, our B2Bs, our expedited, our internationals, all of that stuff. We can run an analysis and see what we have that's available for combined bins, which I alluded to earlier. So I can pull all of my combined bin eligible orders, batch those all at the same time, send out one tote that will then have 40 orders in that one tote, pick them all at once, get them over to packing, pack them out once at a time, and allow us to be much more efficient. We can release our expedited and our next day airs first to make sure they get processed. We can organize our 
B2Bs by cancel dates. If they come over to us and we have 100 B2Bs coming all at once, all right, which one's going to cancel first? Cool. Let's batch that and release that one first, right? Um, B2Cs, we can go by zone. We can go by release date. If that order is going to be shipping to California, it's going to take longer to ship than it is if it's just going right above us to Georgia, right? So if I need to organize my, my shipping by zone, I can pull all the orders and say, give me all my zone 5 and zone 6 orders, batch those together, release those first, process all those because I know I'm going to have a longer turnaround in shipping time. Um, so the recipe for our success is definitely all of the tools and visibility that we have in our batching process that allows us to be as dynamic and fluid and efficient as possible. Um, in picking, the system has a lot of ways for us to uh, analyze our data and what we're dealing with. Um, it has heat maps and suggestions for where we put our people or at least we can run the analysis and say, all right, where am I heavy? Where am I light? Where are my bottlenecks? And then I can make plans to solve those problems. For instance, in my slow, low velocity mods I alluded to before, if I have too much work going to SA or SB, whoop, in these areas, the dark blue would, would indicate that I have a lot of stuff going there, right? So if I have too much work going there, maybe I have a skew that is overly popular and doesn't belong in my low velocity mod. So I needed to go figure out which skews are hot and then re-slot them out of my low velocity mod into the high velocity so I'm not bottlenecking my operation. Um, and so that has the tools and analysis that I can use to run that and see exactly where we stand and what kind of changes we need to make. Um, it will offer us uh, recommendations on where we can put all of our pickers. Um, so if I say I have X amount of pickers in there, where should I put them? Where's the, how many bays should I have? How many people should I put in SASB? How many people should I put in the mezzanine? I can run an analysis and it will say, all right, here's what you're looking at, here's your work level, here's where you should put some people. As we batch and release more work or potentially run out of work and it's getting low or heavy, I can run another one. Like, all right, now that I'm at this position, where should I start moving my people around to? So it offers me the feedback on that, right? And it doesn't have to be the Bible. I don't have to go by this and go, yep, this is where I need everybody, but it can give me a good range of stuff. And I go, yep, that makes sense. No, you know what? I think I want three or four people in here rather than the one, but it gives me the tools I need to be able to see everything and make the correct decisions. Um, this is going to kind of go over all of our options and what we're able to do in picking itself. Uh, when it comes to picking, the idea is to take as many decisions away from our associates as possible. Okay? The more our decisions they have to make, the more opportunities they have to potentially make the wrong one and a mistake. Right? So if I can limit the amount of decisions they have to make to be effective, then that's a win-win for everybody. So in our picking operation, um, the pickers, we choose to use a wearable device. It's a cell phone on our on their arms and a Bluetooth ring scanner on their fingers. As they are making their picks, the screen shows them the SKU, a picture of the SKU, the quantity that is needed for that order, and the location, it tells them the location of that SKU. It also has a grid on the screen that shows them where that location is in that bay for easy quick reference, okay? The picker goes to that location, grabs that SKU or that quantity of SKU, scans the barcode on the tote, on the, sorry, on the SKU. If they scan the wrong barcode, the system stops them. Okay? If it asks for an each and they grab a min pack or vice versa, they're grabbing the wrong unit of measure, the system stops them. If they've made the pick correctly and they go back to put it into their tote, let's say they're doing cluster picking and they have eight totes to pick from and they try and put it in the wrong tote, the system stops them. Okay? So it has a lot of stops to stop any human error from happening and it minimizes the amount of decisions that they need to make. All they have to do is go to the right place, grab the right skew, skew and quantity and put it in the right tote. Um, each pick face that we have in the system is set up with a systematic minimum and maximum. Um, so as we continuously pick out of that pick face, once that skew gets below that set minimum, it automatically triggers a replen request to our replen drivers, sends them a request to go grab that skew out of the, the correct bay, and then backfill that pick face back to its maximum. The idea is our pickers never run out of product to pick, because as soon as they're waiting on product, now they're less efficient. Um, so. And then if we have an order come through that just cleans out the pick face for any reason, that replan request gets top priority and is the first one that gets backfilled, again, to make sure that we're prioritizing and keeping our people as busy as possible. Uh, we have the option to pick in many different ways, which is really great. As we've grown as a company and got bigger and we needed to get faster, we used to operate it one way and now we can just easily change to a different way. So for instance, we have the ability to do rush or cart picking uh, what we would do in there is I would have an expedited order 
or maybe we messed up an order before and we send it out the wrong way or something's broken, so I need to make sure this one gets out and gets out fast. I can take that order, batch it individually, assign it to one specific picker, and have them rush that order out and walk the whole pick snake, drop it off to packing and make sure it gets out expeditiously. Uh, we could also batch a bunch of orders. Let's say I had 10 of those and I wanted one picker to do that. I could batch those 10 and they could be on a cart and they could cart pick again around the pick snake. It's not as efficient, but it guarantees that that order gets out the way we need it to get out. Uh, we've already discussed cluster picking, which is how we do our low velocity pick mod, uh, dynamic zone picking, which is how we perform in our high velocity pick mod. Um, we have the ability to create mini pick aisles or high demand picking. So if we have a skew we know is going to be out of control, busy, we can take that one, change its pick face to a separate location, and then have all the work diverted to there and pick it all at once to thereby not have the bottleneck that's going to be created in my pick mod as every single tote goes to that pick face for an order. Um, and then lastly, what's been a huge game changer for us and really, really awesome is our non-conveyable picking. We call them non-cons. These are the bigger products I alluded to earlier that are too big to go on our belts, non-conveyable. What we do with those is the system breaks them apart into their own pick tasks and sends those to our drivers. And they pick them directly out of the racks. So instead of them having to go to a pick face or anything else like that, let's say somebody orders four SKUs, four different products, three of them are in my pick mod, one is a non-con. It batches those three and releases those to my pick mod to be picked in our normal picking operation and breaks apart that non-con pick and sends it over to our drivers to do rack picks. They simply log into their, their assigned rack pick area. The system sends them to whatever bulk location that has that SKU. They grab that out of there, throw a PID on that, pick it, and then drop it off to our non-con pick area and it allows us to get all of those big uh, orders processed very expeditiously and just straight out and packed. It's, it's really great. Um, and the majority of our non-cons are masters of one, right? So it's one bar cart in a box. So that would just be one. You grab the box and you ship it out in that box. Uh, we also have the availability of uh, different um, wearables or, or, or devices we can use to pick. Uh, what we've decided is best for us is the cell phone with the Bluetooth ring scanner. But we could use the, there's a version of picking that we can use glasses that displays everything um, in your eye in front of you on the lens and gives you all the information you need as well. Uh, we have the brick or the gun, which is just a dyad that does the exact same thing, but a, different, a little bit of different functionality. Um, but there's a, a, a wide array of ways that we could process them and we're able to decide what worked best for us, and that's what we use now to stay as efficient as possible. Um, the results, pretty much, of our, of our improvements here, our average lines picked per hour improved by 174%. The way that we used to process our orders was cart picking um, at our th previous 3PL, and now our ability to do dynamic zone picking and differentiate everything. Um, that number does seem high, but I'm, I'll guarantee it's even higher than it was. We've gone from um, being able to pick maybe 70 lines an hour at our old location with the way we set it up to now our efficient pickers in our high mods are doing 140, 150 lines an hour. So we've literally doubled uh, what we're able to do with our automation levels here. Um, and the system can keep up with it. The employee record in a single hour of 175 lines, that's already been broken. Our record now is 205 lines an hour for an entire day. One picker did that in one day, which is pretty awesome. I think previously in our last setup, it was at 140 lines an hour, I think. And then I don't know what it would have been at the 3PL, but nowhere near that. Um, what is very valuable to us is the ability for our new pickers to start day one. We do about a 60-40 uh, full-time to temp ratio. Um, the idea, obviously, is I want to minimize my turnaround. I don't want to waste time training somebody. just have to turn around and train somebody else, right? So if I'm going to train them, I want to keep them. We can have people come in and start processing day one. They need to get the lay of the land, how the, you know, the, the, the layout of the pick mods work and that kind of stuff. But as far as the, the systematic job of picking, it is as straightforward as can be. So as long as we walk them through correctly, we throw a wearable on them, walk them around, show them how to do it, and they're producing for us out of the gate. Uh, previously, it would be a day or two for them to kind of get familiar with everything. This gets picked this way. This has to not anymore. It's just on the ground, hit their feet and run, which is great. Uh, picking accuracy because of what I alluded to earlier, the system stopping them from being able to make a lot of the errors that they want to make. Um, we have improved 99% to about 99.37% accurate. And then for the expedited order turnaround, I know there was an example this peak season uh, where somebody put an order in online and in under an hour that order was to us, picked, packed, and shipped, and they had the tracking number, um, which is pretty cool for the size of the warehouse that we're at. So definitely some massive improvements there. 
Um, this is a good shot, screenshot of what the packers look at when they get a tote in packing and they scan that TID. This is the screen that kind of populates for them. All of the SKUs that need to be packed are on the left-hand side or scanned. And as they scan them, they move over to the right-hand side, thereby making it very obvious what is still on the order and needs to be scanned and what doesn't. Uh, what we used to do previously is once they scanned their label, a QC sheet would print out and the packer would manually have to take everything out of the tote and then physically verify, yep, I have that, yep, I have that on the sheet, right? Allowing a lot of availability for errors. Uh, this system stops that in its tracks because again, they have to scan every single thing. If they don't have everything, the order's not complete. If they have too many of something, it doesn't belong in that order. So it, it makes our QC um, rate and our percent effective in packing much higher. Uh, we also have the availability, which is very valuable, to set tolerance parameters on either certain accounts or people. So if I have a packer that is making a lot of errors for me, I can isolate that packer and put that in there and say, hey, I want all of their packages to get QC'd. Or if I have a new packer coming in, I want to make sure all their stuff gets touched, I can put that in there. If I have a high uh, error client or a, a, a key account that I want to make sure it goes correctly, I can make sure that account is always extra QC'd and assign that. So the system takes care of that. As soon as it has a package for that, it automatically makes sure it's getting an extra QC um, to make sure we're, our customer satisfaction is as high as possible. Um, our returns process, I'm going to kind of just jump through to this one here. The way we process our returns is um, our customers log on to a Narvar portal and they enter all the data for the returns that they want to, they want to do. They put in a reason for the return that then populates a return label. And then when that label or package arrives at our warehouse, our returns uh, department can go ahead and just scan that barcode and all the information attached to that return populates for our returns people. They can open up the package, verify everything's correct, systematically process that return, deem if that product or SKU is resellable. And if so, that once that return is processed, that SKU is then put back into inventory live because of the integration, keeping us as accurate as possible. And we can turn around and resell that. Um, and that is a far cry from the way we used to process it at the previous WMS, which was a lot of phone calls and manual labor and talking to CE and figuring out if this is a valid return or all that fun stuff. So that has all been um, made much more expeditious. Our availability and ease of which we can process and see all of our stats immediately and in live time allow us to be an effective, very effective management and leadership group. We can, at any point in time in the day, pull up the stats for every single picker, packer, anybody in any department, and analyze what they've been doing all day long, right? So if I have a picker and I look at their first three hours and I know you've been below average for three hours, I can go up to that person like, what are we doing here? What's the problem? What do we need to do? How do I coach that out, right? So I have live stats always refreshing that allow me to be as dynamic as possible, move people around if I need to, and then have those coaching conversations if I need to, to make sure everyone's doing the job that they're hired for. Um, and having those stats, I don't have to wait two or three days or pull yesterday's data to go have that conversation and go have that company you know, up later. Like, hey, yesterday you were actually doing a pretty cruddy job. What's going on? I can see that in live time and go have that conversation right now, um, which has led to a lot of uh, production and efficiency uh, gains. And then with that information, we've been able to set very accurate standards for what we can hold our people accountable to. What is a realistic number that I can expect you to hit in each of these different operations? Um, again, from UPS, I'm not going to set a number that's 10 million and they just yell at you every day for not hitting that number that's infeasible, right? You want to set a number that they can actually get to and then they can have that success. And then with that, we can create a tiered bonus program being if you can get me these numbers or above, now I can incentivize you and give you some extra money, hopefully keeping your morale and your job interest and your work ethic up because I have access to all of that information and all of that data. One minute. I talk too much, sorry. Um, right now, as I alluded to earlier, these are the three main parcel companies that we use. Um, what is huge for us is having the availability to see what we're shipping and be able to add any parcel company's rates into our rate shop. So if DHL wants to come in and get some of our business that can say, hey, we can offer you these rates. In this system, I can pull up every single package that I shipped out last year and say, okay, if I shipped out these packages with these rates, how much money would I save? And if that money is significant and worth our while, cool, put DHL in the rate shopping. Let's see what kind of business they get, right? Um, that is a hypothetical, but potentially in the works this year. And if it rings true, we are set to gain potentially $700,000 this year in shipping savings because we have access to that data and because we can keep 
keeping our parcel companies honest and making them fight for our business and providing that analytics. Um, but we do usually see about 100,000 year over year in savings just with that information. Uh, but again, this year they keep trying to give us better rates and we'll take them. It works for us, right? Um, lastly, before I get off stage, is the there is an automated levels of automation here. It's an artificial intelligence. The, the system is um, integrated with a, a artificial intelligence, a thankful AI, which pretty much is, it allows us to, or the system, to handle a lot of the small changes on orders. Address change, they want to cancel it. All the stuff that is simple can be done by artificial intelligence, thereby saving the warehouse or our CE team or any other people the amount of work it would take for someone to have to go do that. The WMS has live integration with that and can handle that part of it for us, thereby saving us time and money. Um, it can filter for duplicate orders. So if orders come through from the same person, same exact SKUs, and this happened within these parameters, let's say we want it to be, if it's three days, right? If they order the exact same thing within three days, I want you to flag that because maybe they put in a duplicate by accident and we're just going to ship it out for no reason, right? They'll flag those. We can chase those, pardon me, those customers down and say, hey, did you actually want this second order or is this an error? Flag it, catch it, and then not ship it if we don't need to. Save a lot of time, money, and all that stuff. Um, I'll end with some quotes that came from some of our people. We had a huge, huge December uh, peak season. We were able to beat every single number that was projected for us. Not only were we able to do that, we've never once in the six years I've been with the company been able to not turn all the sales off during Christmas. They've always had to turn them off because we couldn't keep up. We moved into a new warehouse the be middle of October, figured out how to use that warehouse, how to operate in it, got all the stuff out, and they had to run more sales to keep us fed. With the system that we were able to have, it speaks to how easy it is to get up and running and use it, right? Because if we had three weeks before peak season came in to bring in all these temps, get them all hired, figure out how to run this warehouse the most effective way, and it's brand new setup, and we were able to beat every record for peak season. It's pretty impressive. Um, and lastly, I'm going to leave you guys with a quote of my own, because as I alluded to at the beginning, my main focus with this job is job satisfaction, but it's also work-life balance, right? I want to be able to spend time with my family and my kids, but I also need to run a very successful operation. With the right tools at my disposal, I can do both, right? I don't want to have to work 70 hours in a week to get the numbers out. If I have the right tools at my beck and call, and I can manipulate the data and read what I need to, I can do the exact same amount of work and work my 40, 50 hours, and then go spend time with my family. All right? Any questions? Cool. Well, thank you guys very much. Yes, go right ahead. Yes, for the returns process? Yep. Oh, yeah, receiving. Yep. Um, absolutely. I think we're going to run out of time, so if you want to just come up here, I can talk to you about that for sure. I have plenty to say about that. Absolutely. Thank you guys for your time. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.